Weight cutting is considered one of the most controversial practices in MMA, with fighters draining their body to extreme levels to reach a figure well below their natural weight. Today, we look at some of the most extreme cuts of all time, from fighters struggling on the scale to those who suffered major health issues. Welcome to the INC, and these are five of the scariest weight cuts in MMA. Darren Till is one of the biggest weight cutters in MMA and isn't afraid to flaunt it. I ain't no welterweight. I'm a light heavyweight fighting in the welterweight. They, it should be illegal what I'm doing. The UFC should ban it, but they can't because I do it naturally and I do it professionally and no one can do a fucking thing about it. Despite weighing north of 200 pounds, Till spent the majority of his career in the 170 pound welterweight division, where he'd often use his size and pressure to outmuscle smaller opponents. But the demands placed on him during his weight cuts raised concerns over his long-term health. Those concerns were raised further when Till allowed a camera crew to film his training camp prior to his match with Steven Thompson at Fight Night Liverpool. The sight of a gaunt Till struggling through the cut was bad enough, but they soon got worse when the Scouser revealed he was going blind due to the pressures placed on his body. Till's condition deteriorated so badly that the camera crew were asked to stop filming, with many calling for the Scouser to switch weight classes. After last minute negotiations, Till's match with Thompson would go ahead, with Till claiming a five round decision in the biggest win of his career so far. Till would eventually lose the battle with the bulk and move to middleweight, where he responded to an easier weight cut by getting even bigger. Aspen Ladd gave fans one of the most uncomfortable moments of 2019. After an unbeaten start to her career, Ladd joined the UFC in 2017, where two knockouts and a fight of the night bonus saw her emerge as one of the biggest bantamweight prospects for many years. The run of form earned Ladd a main event spot against Jermaine Durandamy in what was billed as a number one contender match. Despite her plaudits, Ladd had earned a reputation due to her struggles making weight. Two of her fights had been cancelled due to issues surrounding her cut, while her appearance prior to her match with Tonya Evinger left a lot to be desired. And those fears were further raised when she took to the scales for her match with Durandamy. It was later revealed Ladd cut a quarter of her body weight to make the limit. A cut so extreme, the California State Athletic Commission announced they would no longer sanction her matches at bantamweight. Despite concerns, Ladd's match with Durandamy would go ahead, where the youngster would finally get the chance to answer her critics. I didn't say it was a good answer. Henan Barral's failed weight cut went a long way to damaging his career. Back in 2014, Burrell was considered one of the pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world, amassing a 32-fight winning streak and claiming the UFC bantamweight title, thanks in part to his heavy weight cuts, which saw him drop nearly 30 pounds to make 135. At UFC 177, Burrell was set to face bantamweight champion TJ Dillashaw, who beat Burrell four months earlier in one of the biggest upsets in company history. Burrell was entering the final stages of his cut, when he blacked out in the bathroom and banged his head on the bathtub, forcing the Brazilian out of the fight the day of the weigh-in. There's no excuse for what he did. You don't come here and not make weight, but he pays all the penalty. Yeah, it hurt us, you know, it hurts the show and everything else, but that kid didn't make a paycheck. He's going home with no money, going home without a dime. He hasn't fought, he just paid for a camp, and who knows when he's gonna fight again. Barral would spend the fight card overseen by medical professionals, while Dillashaw would take on UFC newcomer Joe Soto in a hastily arranged main event. Barral was never the same after the fight, being dominated by Dillashaw in their eventual rematch and losing six of his past seven fights, two of which coming after failed attempts to make 135. Barral has recently announced a move to featherweight, where he's set to face Douglas Silva later this year. Chris Cyborg's weight cut placed the first tensions between herself and the UFC. Despite spending her career at featherweight, Cyborg's early fights with the promotion took place at a 140 pound catchweight, with reports the UFC were using the move ahead of an eventual move to bantamweight. But the Brazilian's appearance for her match with Leslie Smith 
put those plans into question. Prior to her match with Lena Landsberg, Cyborg allowed the broadcaster ESPN to document her weight cut. Cyborg is considered one of the toughest female fighters of all time, which made what happened during the broadcast all the more shocking. Ah, baby, breathe, baby. Baby, it's 105 degrees. What we do is we all sit in our room and watch a human being. They bring themselves close to the feature brought the issues of weight cutting back to the mainstream, while several athletic commissions announced they wouldn't sanction further fights for Cyborg at 140. Cyborg herself was unequivocal on who she blamed for the saga. I think they don't want to open my division. And then, then if it then try make all the time I'm on 40, 140, 140, maybe one day I can make 135. Despite her issues, Cyborg was able to make weight, stopping Landsberg in the second round while the UFC would renege and introduce a women's featherweight division in 2017. Sometimes weight cutting can have the deadliest outcome. In 2013, Brazilian fighter Leandro Souza accepted a short notice fight for a Shuto event in Rio, one that required him to drop 33 pounds in just under a week. On the day of the weigh-in, Souza suffered a fatal stroke attempting to cut his final two pounds of weight with a subsequent coroner report suggesting the fighter took multiple diuretic pills to further aid his cut. Two years later, Chinese fighter Yang Jianbing was preparing for a flyweight bout in one championship, when he was hospitalized and subsequently died attempting to make the 125 pound weight limit. The cause of death given as cardiac arrest caused by severe dehydration. The death caused one championship to overhaul its weight cut procedure monitoring their fighters' hydration levels in the weeks leading to an event, with commentator Joe Rogan advocating for the system's usage in the UFC. Bing held a 5-1 record in MMA and was 21 years old. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Conor McGregor's featherweight cuts weren't pleasing on the eye, but it did land him the role of Old Man Marley in the Home Alone remake. Tisha Torres suffered a scare after the weigh-in scales nearly rolled off of the stage. Mackenzie Dern's weight cut at UFC 224 was dangerous. Those croissants have butter, sugar, all sorts! This is the INC, and thank you for watching.